Hello everyone, welcome to another Mystery Monday. Today I'll be talking about some upcoming March releases that I'm really excited for and I'll be reviewing my favorite book of the year so far, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Oh my goodness, you guys know I love Ruth Ware. I think I mentioned it on my first video, on my last week's video. I mentioned it a couple of times and I'm talking about it again, but no. I don't know why I waited this long to read this book because it is, in my opinion, for me, her best book yet. There's Uh, before I get into what I feel and think about the book, let's review. The Death, about, uh, the Death of Mr. Westaway tells us the story of Harriet, Hal, Hal Westaway, who's this young woman who reads tarot for a living, is up to her elbows in debt, and has basically um, a lone shark after her. She's worried for her safety. She doesn't know what else to go. She is at the bottom of the pit at her wit's end. And she received this letter addressed to Harriet Westaway. And in this letter, it says that she's being invited for a will reading because her grandma has left her a legacy. Okay, her grandma left her a legacy. But her grandma died years ago. She's, um, I don't think she's ever met her father. Her mom was a single mother and she was very well aware that this must be a mistake. But she's desperate. So what does she do? She goes. Does she feel good about it? Not at all. She does have conf a conflict about it, but she feels that she has no choice, desperate times, desperate measures. She gets to this beautiful mansion, very Christy-like, and she meets this cast of characters. She meets her three uncles and there's a uh, governor who's woo -woo, out to get her. She does not like how from the start. Okay? Okay, so by how few faces she has decided to put on this character to be very non comedical about when she talks about her mom, but at the same time, she's just there to get her money and leave. To begin with, she is put as they wait for the reading of the will, she finds accommodations in the house and they put her in this room that is scary, terrifying, cold, clinical. Uh, in her room at one point she finds, help me, written on the walls. She also notices that she cannot lock her door from the inside, but she can be locked from the outside. Everything indicates that at one point or another, some not so good things, happening in the room and someone was left there and locked there against their will. This builds to the atmosphere. Hal can feel it. She feels very uneasy in the house. She does not like the room. And um, she's basically our narrator, even though we do find some diary entries that Hal starts reading about someone, a woman, who may or may not be Hal's mom, we don't know who that is, but it tells a story of that cast of characters, including Hal's mom, or mom, according to the will. So she keeps reading about this and finding out about the history at the same time she's in the present, and now next day comes and they go to the reading of the will, lo and behold, Little Grandma Westaway didn't leave her like the 10,000 pounds that I was expecting. She left her the whole state. Yep, 
the big house and then what does how do she's not happy about it because she can't keep up with the lie she doesn't want to accept a lie because in her head she's a fraud and this should stay within the family one of the brothers doesn't like it very much the other one is meh about it the other one is like yeah he doesn't like it but what can he do um so on and so forth and uh there are three big plot twists in this one being a christie reader i guess two of them one of them still surprised me but the one thing i love about ruth is that she's always play fear and like i said it doesn't bother me when i i guess what's going on because for me it adds to the book it makes me more satisfied and as you find out in a minute, it didn't ruin at all my appreciation and enjoyment for this book. It was fantastic, as always, super fair. The atmosphere is, I'm telling you, and the characters. And um, the one thing I loved the most about this book, I know that I've talked to you guys before, how... I understand the comparison between Ruth Ware and Christy, even though I don't, th I think Ruth is her own person, but some of the, their strengths are very similar. And in this book, this book to me read as an homage to Agatha Christie. There were so many Easter eggs within this, not a copy, Easter eggs that whoever loves Agatha Christie and has read a lot of her books will know the little nuances the little easter eggs and they will go i was reading this book and every now and then i was like ah that book oh this book i was like oh ruthie ruthie that was like so cute there were a couple of hmm, a couple of references in this book uh they really like again i i, I don't want to ruin it because i don't want to tell what book it's from because then you might guess and it might influence the twist but uh trust me if you're a christy fan you notice this and that in itself is going to elevate this book for you and for me it's like if i was a writer and i wanted to do an homage to agatha christie i couldn't do any better than ruth did in this book it is fantastic spoiler alert for this book for enjoyment character ambiance fairness plot and execution i gave them all a 10 you know if i didn't deduct any point you can do the math this book in my opinion it is a five mustache book amazing please pick it oops i don't know if that's loud please pick it up and read if you're gonna read one ruth Ware book in your life read this one fantastic awesome okay guys now i hope you don't mind if i look down i just want to make sure that i hit all the books that i have here on my list of books that i'm looking forward for their release in march some of them are read and i'll just talk very quickly about them but uh these are only the ones that i will be reading myself so i highly recommend them best way to do this will be is my first you know release video so i'll do them by order of release so first we have march 2nd the first book the coming out in March 2nd is a thriller called Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. I had a chance to read the book in advance of its release and oh my god, that was like amazing, fantastic, super fast, very interesting. It basically grips you by the hair on the first page and does not let you go. I have been a big fan of mixed media recently and I love how this book it alternates um, so there is multiple point of views and it's told both in the present and in the past but alternated from various characters but in the middle of it all you get 
to see um, excerpts of a Netflix documentary. And um, it was done so superbly that even though I was reading about it, I felt like I was watching the episode. It's very much like making a murderer like. But why does it matter? Why does it have a Netflix documentary in it? Well, because basically we're following the Pines family is no stranger to tragedy. Everything started uh, many years ago when the oldest son, at the time still a teenager, um, is arrested and convicted of the murder of his then girlfriend. He claims he's still innocent and that's where the documentary comes in. There, the Pines, his family, never let it go. They're still trying to prove his innocence. So as the book starts, Danny is still in prison. Then their second oldest son, Matt, is in um, New York. He attends NYU and he was supposed to go on March break with his family, but because of conflicts in the schedule, he doesn't. So the rest of the family, mom, dad, the baby brother and the younger sister, go to Mexico, okay? Matt is living his best life when he gets a phone call saying that his whole family is now dead. And I just have to say that you just can't put this book down. The narrative is so enthralling. Uh, I really, I don't wanna say anything because it will spoil this book but feeling takes you to wonderful places. You write there, everything that he has revealed was fair and it was pertinent to the plot and it was so exciting and he did a great job developing the pines. It became one of those families that you wanted to meet in real person. You wish that was your family or your best friend's family that you would have dinner with them all the time. I actually read the book and I mourned their death and i was so upset their daughter uh maggie was dead and i'm not spoiling it because we know she's dead from the beginning but we get to know her with the past narratives throughout the book oh my goodness she was fantastic <sighs> When an author gets you to care about characters, you know you're reading something good. I recommend you pick up Every Less Fear as soon as it comes out tomorrow. Or if you're reading after March 2nd, it already came out, go pick it up now. Same I will say for Lockdown Hair. Lockdown Hair is a children's book and um, I'll link it up here. My kind of review of it when I talked last Wednesday, but it come, comes up uh, March 2nd, and it is a fantastic book to children that helps them understand and process and voice their concerns and anxiety related to the current uh, pandemic. The next one I don't know much about, but um, just the beginning that I've read about it, I knew that I had to read it, and I definitely will. It's called The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And I'll just read to you what got me hooked. A female apothecary secretly dispenses poisons to liberate women from men who have wronged them, setting three lives across centuries on a dangerous collision course. Rule number one. The poison must never be used to harm another woman. Rule number two. The names of the murderer and her victim must be recorded in the apothecary's register. So, so I think this story will tell us the story uh, of the beginning of this apothecary. And um, in 1791, so we will find out what happened then but also I think it's going to alternate with the present when we have a scorned woman looking for revenge and hears about this and she starts investi investigating the unsolved um, apothecary murders. 
it it sounds so amazing and it's coming out tomorrow you guys i already pre-ordered it on audible because i don't want to wait there's too many good books coming out this week so i'll be doing some on audible some or not but you know i will be reading the last apothecary and i have super high hopes for it and the cover is beautiful right i mean i don't know and i'm all about girl power so if women can pay back to jerks i'm here for it go girl i mean for now wait for my review next on the list we have the fragile ones by jennifer chase it is the fifth book in the katie scott series i haven't read any of the books yet but if i like this book i'll definitely be picking them out but it's just the synopsis grabbed my interest and i most definitely need to read it it will come out on march 8th and it basically tells the story of two sisters Susan and megan they are found dead with matching outfits and um why is that interesting you ask well because apparently as an autopsy is released not only do they find the markings of a serial killer they also find out that, that the girls are not sisters the dna does not match and one of the girls dna comes back as a positive result for a kidnapped girl years and years and years ago i mean how can you read the, that synopsis and i'll want to know what happens well i'll be finding out this month or soon because i need to know right it is, uh, I don't know, it's the kind of book that I do like and I hope, I have high hopes for it. I hope it's fast paced and fair and interesting, but uh, like as far as plot or journality goes, thumbs up, Jennifer Chase, thumbs up. I wanna read your book now. The next book I have for you and it will be coming out March 9th so next week as well it's called the all the murmuring bones by ag and angela's letter and um it is a really really i i read this book as well it's a really it, it's you know when you're a child and you hear those fairy tales and that story that is told to you and you go to bed thinking about this and you dream about it this feels like that it's a fairy tales for adults it delves into mermaid mythology and it's dark it's dark but it's so enthralling i just couldn't put it down i just wish that i had someone telling me the story to sleep every day so basically we have mira and O'Malley who is the last of the O'Malley. She's been basically abused by her grandma all her life, but the O'Malley's have this history. So many, many, many years ago, in exchange for prosperity, they struck a deal with the more people that would be sacrificed a child from each O'Malley generation. Well, the O'Malley's are suffering because it hasn't been really a sacrifice in many, many years for other reasons. And guess what? Mirren is the last chance. Her grandma wants to sacrifice her. She refuses to be a passive agent in her own history. So she goes on on a quest to save herself and change the family history. She's fantastic. She's superb. Really, if you like any sort of mythology, in any way, if you like mermaid, if you like fairy tales, if you like dark, if you like goth, pick this book up. I don't think you're gonna regret it at all. And then comment down below if you liked it. Next, we have Her Dark Lies by J.T. Allison. It's like, honestly, all I read about the book was the beginning. At the wedding of the year, a killer needs no invitation, jutting from sparkling turquoise water off the Italian coast, Ile Isola, is an idyllic setting for a wedding. 
in the majestic clifftop villa owned by wealthy Compton family up and coming, artist Claire Hunter will marry handsome, charming Jack Compton, surrounded by close family, intimate friends, and host of Dark Secrets. I don't need to know any more than this than to know I need to know what her dark lies are. And I'll be, this is one of the books that I know I'll be picking up and reading as soon as they come up. I, 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 I don't know why, but I can't wait for it. Next, also coming up March 9th, we have The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. I've had a chance to read this book back in January and I've been waiting for this moment to share with you guys because listen to this. In this book, guess who your detective is? The queen. Not a pseudo queen. Not a pseudo queen. The real queen Elizabeth of England. And oh my god, is she ever delightful. Like, she, I, I don't know. Like, I wish she... That's how I picture her being behind closed doors. Like, oh, she's cheeky and witty and funny. And she has this sense of, like, duty. And uh, basically, she, um, so she, on her ninth birthday celebration, a guest dies in her house and she goes on a quest because she needs to know what really happened. And she doesn't want anyone putting up with, uh, she trusts the MF5, but she really thinks that this can be more than meets the eye. So she wants to find the real truth. So this boy's family has, you know, peace of mind. And the book is marketed as a first in a series. I hope that's true because I really need to see Queen Elizabeth investigate more crimes because guys, she's, she's like if Miss Marple had money and sense of humor. I don't know. I really loved it. I really loved it and then it, i i don't know how the author could do it i don't know how you can write about a normal person in real life but it's obvious fiction or is it i don't know you read and you tell me do you really think that behind closed doors the queen is actually like a amateur sleuth i don't know if she is uh, if she is and these are actually real life dress as fiction bravo queen you're really good at what you do no i'm just kidding but i think just the cheekiness and a sense of humor and how modern this book is in every little page you know i talk about atmosphere and i talk about if you're going to bring a city or a era or a year in you bring it in and you make it a character and sj bennett did there's that london is a character in every single character action, you know this is 2020, 2016, you know it's in the present day, you get all the references. And it represents our current era very well. So uh, I, I cannot express how much I loved this book. Again, go pick it up. So the next two books I have are going to be released respectively on March 11th and 15th and they are children books as well. So on um, March 11th, You've Got Value by Lila Smith is being released and is a really nice simple book to um, get your children to start thinking about values and what their values are and what it means to have values. On March 15th, Please Don't Give Me a Hug by Ju Judy. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, Morayon. It's a, a beautiful book that uh, helps you talk to children about body autonomy. And that is okay not to want a hug and people shouldn't be forcing this on other children. It's a very empowering book. If you have children or no children or at some point gift children, I recommend these books as well. Okay, next. We have The Jigsaw Men by Nadine Matheson. And this book comes out on March 16th. I am counting the days to read this book because all I know about it and all I need to know about it is that this book is basically 
a cat and mouse game between a serial killer and his copycat. And in the next, you have a female, I'm assuming because her name is Angelica, a female DI trying to keep people from dying because the, the copycat is on the prowl. And um, I think the serial killer is not very good, at, not happy about it. Like, honestly, I need to know nothing more than what I've just told you. Rest assured, I'll be reading this book and I'll be revealing it because it sounds amazing. The Jigsaw Men. <laughs> the next two books I have for you are going to be released on March 18th. The first is The Good Neighbor by R.J. Parker. It's a book that follows Leah. She's going home one day. She sees a deer on the road. She swerves. And her car is basically, it needs to be towed. Her phone dies. She can't charge it. So she starts walking and she knocks on the first door he see, she sees. This very nice man lets her in, helps her, calls AA or AAA, I suppose it is calls triple A and help her go on her merry way home. She can't stop thinking about him. So the next day to thank him for his kindness, she buys a bottle of wine and she knocks on his door and she's gonna say thank you, but she does not find him. She found the cops instead because on the house that she was just there the night before, there has been a murder and that guy is actually not the owner of the house, he was a killer. I read this book and was a ride. I'm just telling you, it was a ride. It was also a game of cat and mouse and it did not stop. It was action after action after action. And one thing that I feel was done superbly is that I actually liked the killer more than I liked the cop. Because he, he was... I mean, I, I don't like killers, don't get me wrong, but he was very enticing. And um, you understand his motivations, even if you don't agree. And it was just, you, you just don't know. You keep wondering, why didn't he kill Leah? Does he have plan for her? What else is he gonna do? How far is he gonna go? You don't know, Leah doesn't know, but she needs to know because she's still attracted to him somehow. I don't know, just, read this book and find out how it ended because whew, it was a ride. Another book that is also released on March 18th and I have read and it was also a ride but in a different way, The Castaways by Lucy Clark. This book tells us the story of um, two sisters, Erin and Lori. They've been close their whole lives. They really rely on each other. They are each other's safe port, each other's rock. But something happens that will shake both of their worlds. This book is told from the point of view of both of them at alternating times because after a very hurtful divorce, Lori decides to start fresh. So she convinces her sister to go with her to Fiji on this vacation to mark the beginning of a new life for her to just mourn what's in the past and be a better person for the future. The day before the flight leaves, they have a fight. So Erin never makes it to the airplane. The airplane falls. We pick up two years later with uh, Erin dealing with the aftermath and um, still wondering where her sister is. Then, out of the blue, they find the pilot that was supposed to be with her sister because he was the pilot of the plane, but he doesn't remember anything. So Erin just picks up and goes back to where it all started and she needs to see him. She needs to ask him what happened to her sister. He claims he doesn't remember much, but you know, it is too late. Meanwhile, 
as we following Aaron now in the present, we get Lori's point of view from the past perspective as she tells us exactly what happened from the moment the plane landed on the island. Is she alive? We still don't know and we're not gonna know until the book ends. But uh, we get these two and we can see how such a tra tragedy can really shape each other's life. And um, it also talks about sisterly bond and how powerful bonds we have in life will help us shape us in the best way possible. And how every action we have has a consequence and how we have to be accepted of you know ourselves and see us as agents of our own lives and it was just beautiful it was not only like that moral story and kind of like that um character study but it was a, a brilliant thriller this in my opinion is lost done right i love lost i did but after season three it was like mm, if you know what i mean if you watch it you know what i mean this one is like where was lucy clark she should have written the last seasons of lost and then everybody would have been satisfied it's like honestly pick it up you're not gonna regret it the castaways guys i'm sorry i i'm gonna keep going but I just want to apologize. I don't know if I'm on my game or not today. I think it's because it's my first TBR. Candid moment here. I'm very nervous. Like I'm having an outer body experience. I don't know what I'm talking about. But this has to go up on Monday. So I'll probably edit. But I can only say thank you for being here. I'll edit it to the best of my ability. And it's going to get better on my next TBR. I'm just so sorry. I, I'm nervous and I don't know why. Okay, I don't know if you can pick up on that but I, I just figured out throw it out there because I'm an honest person but let's going and um yeah so next we have the next the lost village by Camilla Sten it comes up March 23 and I'll just read you the first sentence of the description and that's really I read that boom TBR I put it on my goodreads anticipated releases of 2021. The Blair Witch Project meets Midsummer in this brilliant, disturbing thriller from Camilla Stan and electrifying new voice in suspense. D Midsummer, The Blair Witch Project. Do you need to know more? No, but if you need to know more, basically we have this filmmaker who's really interested um, in finding out what happened to this lost village because it's a village that everybody just disappeared she sets off to make a documentary out of it and as soon as her and her team sets camp weird things start to happen i mean honestly i don't need to know more to know that i want to read this book and i'm i have high hopes i hope i'll be creeped out i hope i'll be scared I hope it will be the one book, the horror book or suspenseful book that I read that it will make me not want to sleep. This is my hope for this book and I hope it meets my expectations. Also, on March 23rd, we have Every Vow You Break. by peter swanson why is it on my anticipated list because i love the guy oh i don't know man i don't know i have high hopes for this book i'm hoping this is the one that he won't meet my tropes if you have any questions about it just Check my video up here to know exactly how conflicted I feel about uh, Peter Swenson. But you know what? Even before I say anything about this book, just pick it up and read because you, if you like thriller, you're going to enjoy it. But, so basically it tells the story about this newlywed couple. They go on vacation. And not only after getting there, the bride realizes that a guy with whom she had a one night stand before the wedding so basically cheated on her husband with is there i mean the description in itself tells me that i might be a little upset 
But how can you not read that? You need to know what finds out because you know us, you know what? Peter is also the king of twists and turns. So I cannot wait to see what he does with that plot. Mark on your calendar, March 23rd. Can't believe I said that, but I did. You should read it. And I only have one more book that I'm looking forward to. It's released in March and it comes out almost at the end of the month on March 30th. It is She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. Okay, so this is a romance and a YA thriller. And um, it is said to be a psychological thriller inspired by the pictures of Dorian Gray. I love um, Dorian Gray. So I can't wait to see what modern twist is going to be done. But it tells a story about two women that as they fall in love, they are faced with quite a few uh, adversities, such as one fire, two murders, three drowning bodies, one killer, one stalker. How are they going to survive that summer? I don't know, but I want to find out. Anyway, Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed my um, review of The Death of Mrs. Westaway, but more importantly, thank you for being here for my first TBR. I promise I won't be as nervous next time. And uh, that's it. Have a great week, you guys, and until next time, be the hummingbird.